Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And well, it's been an awful, awful weekend for boxing fans. Uh, sadly, Patrick Day, uh, a 27 year old super welterweight fighting out of Freeport, New York, USA and sadly uh, fighting for his life in hospital after being knocked out in the 10th round by Charles Cromwell undefeated massive puncher in, uh, in Chicago on an Eddie Hearn show now I'm not going to play the blame game at the moment, but this is the the dark side of boxing where it's a dangerous sport and it is not to be played at, not to be played at at all. Uh, Patrick's a non-puncher. Uh, he's 22 fights, 6 stoppages and out of the uh, stoppages he's not really the 6 stoppages, he's not really stopped anybody of any note uh, but you know he's medically cleared to fight and uh, I hope that he's alright so our prayers are going to be with Patrick Day at this moment in time uh, and his family uh, so let's hope he's going to be okay uh, no doubt Eddie Earn will be uh, making sure that Patrick's family are financially looked after because Eddie Hearn of course he's the uh, he's the man with the billions isn't he billionaire Eddie so let's see if Eddie's uh, Gonna look after his family. I'd like to think that he would. And uh, Eddie's big-hearted, isn't he? So I'd hope he would. So anyway, moving on uh, to the rest of the boxing stuff I want to talk about. Right, what has happened to boxing lately? What's happened? It's a uh, it's a sport I love and a sport I've followed all my life ever since I can rem remember ever since going back to Alan Minter against Hagler a month before I was 10 year old that's how long I've followed boxing now we got for example Tyson Fury the self titled Gypsy King who says he's a fighting man but yet he's now doing his best not to fight anyone Especially any, of the, any, especially any of the top guys. I mean, I mean, who who has Tyson Fury beat? Who is a top guy? Who? Who would you say he's beat? Vladimir. He beat him, hasn't he? Who else has he beat? Who's a top guy? Steve Cunningham, a blown up cruiserweight. How many more top guys has he beat? Who? Chisora. He's not a world champion. Hamer, he's not a world champion. He beat Chisora twice. They're his top five guys. He now fights Braun Strowman, whatever he's called, in a wrestling pantomime in Saudi. So that's what's happening with Tyson Fury. In fact, after a two and a half year layoff, whether it's for a drug ban, a two year back data drug ban or he retired or vacated whichever we're told by this man Tyson either way it's become a farce now hasn't it you know he comes back he fights Serifa Sarifi then Pianetta 
then in my opinion after those two, perform two performances those two poor performances is thrown to Wilder by BT Sport and Frank Warren he gets dropped twice in a fight that we can make an argument for a draw and we can make an argument for a Fury win I can't make a case for a Wilder win but I can make a case for a draw we then have the fanatics the Tyson Fury fans are fanatics all running 10 accounts apiece on Twitter who do nothing all day and night but defend his performance which in my opinion was alright but people are losing their mind over it and, I, and in my opinion I have to say it's because they got caught up in the story surrounding the great story around this comeback so we got Fury saying Wilder fight is a done deal for February 22nd yeah he had a life and death with Wallin and all this WWE stuff is risky for his cut isn't it that could open up at any time now I've said for ten and a half months that 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 fight won't happen with Wilder again people saying I'm a hater and bitter and that I'm an arse licker a Peter Fury and I'm being harsh I'm being harsh on Tyson because of them reasons totally not true yeah Peter Fury's my pal but me and Peter Fury don't always see eye to eye on a lot of things but if we have something to say we're going to say it because we're both strong personalities but but that's just that's just boxing isn't it it's uh, I don't have to prove myself to anyone on social media all I have to do is be true to myself and to my family and uh, to my business partner NJ and to channel Porky's Corner I don't have to prove anything to anybody I know who my peers are in the boxing community and uh, they're all in my phone in WhatsApp that's my peers if you're not in my phone in WhatsApp you're not a peer of mine and that's just how it goes so if you follow me on social media I'm grateful but I'm very distrusting of social media because we have that many people that email me I mean if I could show you some emails I get people who are fantastic and great and then a couple of weeks down the line they turn out to be double agents and just messes so I don't really take emails that seriously it's just a short message uh, there's certain people out there that spoil it for the spoil it for the others. I don't engage on YouTube. You won't see me putting tweets out ever again. The Twitter is just going to be for videos. Uh, I might put odd tweet out, but it's very rare. I'm going to do that because social media now it's it's gone a bit dark. Tommy Fury is right. Tommy Tommy, sorry, Tommy Frank is right. It's gone very dark and uh, who is who it who are who's on social media now who's who's genuine who who are these people on social media especially twitter and youtube who are these people they don't put the proper names on there they're not they're, just, they're, they're either called i don't know some disco dave or big Cole or john o'arney John O'Arney, who is he or or whoever, Big Fred or Joe Blow or all these people on social media acting out the fantasies. Most of them are people who work in the boxing industry, probably in gyms near where I live. But so it's very hard to 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 root the genuine ones out. Uh, I mean, I always say this to people on social media, especially emails give me a ring let's speak on FaceTime and when people can't speak to me on a telephone or on FaceTime that's when I just divert their emails into my spam so that's why I don't always get back to everybody at the beginning 
When they send me an email, if I know them, I reply straight away. If I don't know you, you're in my spam. So I'm just sorry, but I just don't trust anybody anymore. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to talk about that. It's negative, isn't it? But well, getting back to what we're talking about, here's what I see happening. I see Tyson Fury milking the American dream. I even see him moving out there to live. Now, I don't see him fighting Wilder. I see him jumping in and out of jumping in and out of boxing. That's what I see him doing: jumping in and out and taking up opportunities to do other things like wrestling and maybe films and who knows modeling things like that tv sh chat shows that's what i see him doing and why not all you people who all follow tyson fury now and 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 applaud him were all ridiculing him when he beat vladimir klitschko when he was in bits now where were all you people when we were all sat in the team fury gym on Halliwell road when Tyson were 27, 28 stone and him just turning up to help Peter out with some sparring with Yui. Where were all you people then? When you were driving around in a 51 plate Mercedes. Where were all you people then? Hey, where were you all? Hey, all you people jumped on the Tyson Fury bandwagon. We all gave him an hard time then. I noticed because I look on social media. The same people that were slagging him are now following him. The same people who jump on the express train. Now, I wish Tyson Fury all the best, but I deal in facts. I'm very cricket, very critical. I don't deal in bullshit. I deal in facts. Tyson Fury has won one world title, one. Sorry, one world title win. He's got four world title belts that he hasn't got no more, and he's one world title win. They're the facts. He's just gone life and death with Otto Wallin. They are facts. Get used to it. If he comes back and beats Wilder, he's the man. But for the moment, Deontay Wilder is the man. He's got the most defences. He's got the best belt. He is the man. Nobody wants to fight him. Nobody wants to fight Luis Ortiz. So Wilder's having to fight him twice. Joshua didn't want to fight him. Tyson Fury didn't want to fight him. Tyson Fury didn't want to fight Vladimir till the fifth opportunity. They are the facts. Get used to them. Alright? But I see Tyson taking up opportunities in America and like I said, why not? This country treat him like a mongrel when he won that world title. They treat him awfully. So... But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. Terrible shot that one it. Battery gone. So I don't want to hear about Tyson Fury at the moment. He's not boxing. He's wrestling. He's going to Saudi Arabia to do it. They're going for the Saudi money. He's going to make as many millions as he can. He's going to be the richest gypsy in the country. And good luck to him, but 
in boxing terms, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in Tyson Fury at the moment. I'm interested in people who want to fight and take challenges on, like Yui Fury, 24 year old getting in there with Povetkin. That's what I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in where Yui Fury is going. I'm interested in Robbie Davis Jr. against Lewis Ritson. I'm interested in them kids. 50-50 fights. I'm interested in people that want to take challenges on. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in people that just want to uh, pile the money up and tell us they're the best and who've not got a belt but they're dining out on a world title win from four years ago. Four years ago. That's nearly half a decade, in it? Four years ago, Tyson Fury beat Vladimir. Can't keep dining out on that. I mean, in another three years, if he's still not got a world title, I we going to keep being told that he's this lineal guy while he's fighting the Otto Wallins of this world. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. He didn't fight David Price when David Price were knocking people out. I had John McDermott beating him in the first fight. You know, that, then there's the swept under the carpet, the drug issue with Hamer. There's you know the cocaine test and there's the refusal to take another test. There's the nandrolone. It's all a bit murky to me, and you know I don't want to hear about it all. People forget things very quickly in boxing, but I don't. Tyson Fury beat the man Vladimir, but that was four years ago. He gave up that status when he vacated them belts or when he was stripped or whatever it were. He gave up that status four years ago and there's question marks over whether he should have even had the win over Vladimir especially with the Nandrolone thing hanging over him so I don't want to hear about Tyson Fury I wish him all the best but I don't want to hear about it he waited it out for Vladimir like Mayweather waited it out with De La Hoya, Mosley, Miguel Cotto Calzaghe waited it out with Hopkins and Roy Jones until they were old men and he would drop twice in them fights, Carl Zaghi. Yes, Tyson Fury fought Wilder, but let's have it right. He were fed to him. Because people said he were finished. The word in boxing after the Pianetta fight was, Tyson Fury is finished. Right? He couldn't get Pianetta out there. I don't want to hear all this chat about he wanted to get rounds in. Boxers don't want to get rounds in. Tyson Fury's got a good KO ratio. He's got a good KO ratio. He didn't want to get rounds and he wants to get people out there. It's a dangerous sport. Look at this kid who's fighting for his life. This Patrick Day. It's a dangerous sport. Very dangerous. Uh, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I just know that I'm not. But at the end of the day, if I am wrong, it's just an opinion. But if I'm wrong, so be it. But like I said, I'm usually I'm not. Point is this, Fury has no belt. They are facts. And he's won title win in 2015. If I'm wrong and Tyson Fury, Wilder rematch happens in 2020 February, I will shut my channel down on YouTube and I will resign from Dennis Sobson's Fight Academy. I'll go tell Dennis I'm jacking, but I'm still his pal. That's how confident I am that while the fight doesn't happen, February 22nd. And I'll tell Dennis, I'll say, Dennis, go and set the stig on. Because he's desperate to be a boxing promoter and he feels that he's a lot to offer, stig. So, and he's not hurting anybody, is he? So people should get off his case calling him a nonce on social media, all these people on fake accounts, they wouldn't do it to his face, would they? He's not even got a criminal record and they're calling him things like that. That's the dark side of social media. If you want to see some of the things he gets sent, yeah, I know that he can appear a bit odd and a bit eccentric, so the stig, but to be called a nonce is not very nice, is it? With no proof. So, but anyway... Anyway, getting on, to, getting on to a few different things now. What do you think to this snooker shot here? I'm just going to slot in now. There's a couple of snooker shots. Have a look at these while I get 
while we move on to something else. All right, something a bit more positive. I love you. Nigel Ben next on agenda. He is 56 year old in January. 56 in January and he's going to fight in November. He hasn't fought for 23 years. His last win in a boxing ring was Danny Perez in 1995. The same Danny Perez who retired at 19 and 4 having beat seven men with winning records for God's sake so we're talking 24 years and two months since Nigel Benn's last win which was over a guy whose best win was Jerry Payne 13 and 0 Jerry the Power Payne and his win before the Ben loss was Tony Brooks, 10-5 and 2. Oh my God, sugar Tony Brooks, 10-5 and 2. He retired five months after the Ben loss, did Danny Perez. After beating Robert Britt, 5 and 9 and 3. He then retired. His seventh win over a guy. with a winning record this ladies and gentlemen was in the mid 90s with no box rec in other words Danny Ray Perez aka the Pitbull from Albuquerque New Mexico USA who had a KO ratio of 21 percent it was on pay-per-view on the Bruno vs McCall undercard as chief support on a night of free will title fights Sky Sports first ever pay-per-view in England at Wembley Stadium if I remember it's wrong that Saki Obika versus Nigel Benn is happening 100% wrong now tickets ringside a £1,000 that's a joke it's in Birmingham £1,000 for tickets ringside to watch a man two months away from his 56th birthday and fighting a 40 year old man who's never been stopped who's 34, 7 and 3 and last win was 22 years after Ben's last win it's a joke it's a joke let me tell you a total joke I don't give a hoot how long Ben has been in camp for this fight and that he's stronger faster quicker than a speeding bullet I've heard it all before with cost cutter David Hay yeah Nigel Ben used to take drugs and party with the best of them you know he used to party with the Essex boys didn't he who were in that film uh, you know his mates with Carlton Leach and all that them boys were, were were doing cocaine before it were really popular up north uh, and taking ecstasy smoking weed boozing and he were on 40 part driver day one in Nigel Ben is, is saying so but now he's he's found God and he's uh, he, he, how can I explain it? He's found God and he's training hard. He's been in, he's been in camp for, for ten years. He's been training ten years, and you know he, he's using all facilities at matchroom. Well, good on you, Nigel. Keep fit, but if you want closure, why don't you go spar John Ryder and give it your best shot? If you want some closure, be a sparring partner for John Ryder. Do you know what I mean? No, don't go fight Saki Obika, who's a monster. He is a monster. Yeah, his, his best days are gone, but he is a monster. He's 16 years younger than you, Nigel, and he's a monster. And I see it ending badly. I see Nigel Ben 
Well, look, this is the outcome. I see Nigel Ben quitting on his stool like he did. Like he did against Steve Collins. And, he's, uh, and, and then just saying it's a young man's game. You know, that's what he's going to say. I'm going to leave it to Connor. I'll leave it to Connor and Harley. You know what I mean? I'm going to leave it to Connor. Yeah. Yeah, all the way, I'll back him all the way, mate, but I've just not got it no more. Now, I don't know if anybody's seen Nigel Benz. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen Nigel Benz's words that he said after he retired, because he retired three times. He actually retired three times in the ring, right, and came back every time. You know, he came back after the Malinga fight, after retiring in the ring, afterwards in a flood of tears. He then did it with a Collins fight, and then did it, and then after the second Collins fight, he said that's it. But he's back again, isn't he? Why is he back? He's back for one thing, and one thing only: pound notes. Now, when a fighter comes back after all them years, but yet he's telling us he's worth millions. When he comes back, it's for one thing and one thing only, to get a few quid. Alright, we're seeing everybody get a few quid, boxings on everybody's lips, we're coming back for money. I'd give Nigel Ben more respect if he said, listen, I've got involved in a few deals, a few land deals, I've got a lot of money tied up, I can do with the capital. I'd give him respect then, I'd even go and buy a ticket myself. Anything up to 100 quid I'd pay to go watch it, but I'm not going to go watch that. I'm not even going to watch it on pay-per-view. I want to remember Nigel Ben as a guy who's got seven wins over former, current and future world champions. The same as Marvin Hagler, the same as Sugar Ray Leonard, the same as Andre Ward. Seven wins. Carl Froch has got more though. But can I just say, I want to remember Nigel Ben as a guy who just liked to tear up. That's what I want to remember him as. I don't want to remember him as some guy quitting on his stool for money. There's too many people in boxing at the moment who are taking fights that they know that they're not going to win and they're just doing it for financial gain. How many people do we know in the boxing industry are taking fights and we know when they get in that ring that they're going to get beat but they're going to big it up on social media and they're going to give it the big one how many fights do we actually see like that and then we're actually in awe when they actually pull it off how many have we seen we've seen Andy Ruiz this year but we're talking about a kid here that's a top amateur and that really should there's only got one defeat. I got that one against Parker and everybody thought he won. But how many other times do we see a fight and we think, do you know what? He could do it. Well, I fell for the David A. Patter twice and I'm not falling for Nigel Ben's patter. I'm sorry, but no. Like I said, he'll quit on his stool and he'll say it's a young man's game. It's a total joke if he gets to fight Beaker. If he gets injured and we have another Watson or McClellan on our hands, the people around Nigel Ben will run for the hills. They will run for the hills. I don't want to see it happen. It's bad for boxing. All right. I want to draw a line under it now. But uh, so, all right. Now, what do you think to these snooker shots? Have a look at these. Shout out to my mate Paul from uh, Barnsley, Paul Sykes. Uh, thank you very much for this vintage cue. It's a 1947 Willie Smith and George Nelson. Is it? Yeah, Willie, and jo Willie Smith and George Nelson Limited. I've had it uh, reconditioned, straightened out by David Bowen Cues at Wadduff. Uh, he does them for all professionals, very good, look at that, it's like brand new. And it's straight as well. Uh, in them days, the shafts were a lot thicker, so it's been thinned out, but like I said, it's, 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 I'm, getting, I'm getting good use out of it now. So, 
I'm impressed. I am impressed. Look at that. That is brilliant. That's what you do with a straight cue. Now, I saw somebody on Twitter say, people who walk into pubs and clubs with their own cue need stabbing. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know, but anyway. So, just a quick shout out to uh, David Bowen Cues. Uh, he's in Thompson Local and he's on the internet. David Bowen Cues at Wadworth. Thank you very much, David, for what you've done for me. I won't forget that. And uh, congratulations on your new baby, Max, you and Liz. All right. Uh, but like I've just said, thanks to Paul for the cue. I won't forget that. Uh, it's very nice of you, Paul. And uh, all you snooker fans out there, just keep improving on your game. All right. I'm not the best snooker player in the world. I just do this to have a release from uh, from boxing, but all right, peace out. Now, speaking of circus acts, I am going to mention Evander Holyfield. Why he's why he's want to come back? Why he wants to come back? I don't know. Uh, Evander Holyfield, in my opinion was a great fighter he's an all-time top 10 he's an all-time top 10 guy Evander Holyfield the real they didn't call him the real deal for nothing do you know what I mean he's, Evander Holyfield's birthday he shares it with me he's exactly eight years older than me so I'm 49 on Saturday the 19th of October Evander Holyfield is 57 on Saturday, 57 years of age. Now, he wants to come back. Uh, he was last in a world title fight against Nikolay Valuev, 2008, and he lost a manner to decision. He should have had that. He should have won that decision. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? He were robbed in Zurich, but... What, what can you do? If he comes back, it's a joke. You know, his last win went against Nielsen, uh, Brian Nielsen, 2011. He's been out the ring eight years, but Nigel Benn's been out 23 years. But I don't want to see Holyfield come back. I don't want to see him come back at all. I want to see him be a trainer. I'd love to hear what he... I'd love to see him be a trainer. He's already punch drunk. Yeah, he's, he's wasted 375 million gambling. I mean, I've heard one story from a friend of Dennis's, uh, in, uh, an American guy who worked with Don King for years, uh, Don Majeski. I had him. We went out for dinner with him, me, Dennis, Mick Hennessy, and Dom in Bulgaria. It was a nice meal, actually. And uh, Dom were telling me some great stories. And he were telling me that Holyfield did five million and in one night gambling. Now, you don't exactly take the cash, you have like a credit card, don't you? So to them it's just not like gambling, is it? So be careful with your money, boxers. But gambling's uh, uh, gambling and cocaine are the biggest scourges in, in boxing at the moment and egos. But Evander Holyfield, don't come back Evander. I want to remember you as a great champion. I want to remember you as a guy who... Who beat six? Who's got 16 wins over world champion? The same as Muhammad Ali. Uh, you know, I, I want to remember you as a warrior. The real deal, a proper, proper warrior. A small man fighting it. Fight, six foot two. A small guy, Evander Holyfield, fighting. You know these big giants like Riddick Bow and Lennox Lewis and. You know, people like that. That's how I want to remember Vandy Holyfield. I don't want to remember him as some guy coming back and, you know, get getting knocked about by, you know, I don't know, just some... Getting knocked about by somebody like Bracamonte or just coming back for nostalgia. Please don't do it. Uh, but like I said, speaking of it, Circus Axe, we've got Eddie Hearn. 
talking about Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor sent him a tweet saying, dance for me, Eddie. And you know what Eddie Earns like? He's the quizessential whore. Yes, please, Conor, I will. I'll dance for you anytime. You know, it, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, it, it's... You know, it... Money rules boxing, money rules boxing, and uh, I don't know, it's uh, Conor McGregor, stay in your lane, you're an MMA fighter, UFC, whatever they call it, you know, rolling around in your boxer shorts, stay in your lane, you're in a tough sport, stay in that, you're not a boxer, you know, stay in your lane, you know, but Speaking of uh, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn saying that Dazone and Sky will put on a fight between Rebecca Vardy and Colleen Rooney. I mean, is this how low? Is this how low it's all become now where we've got Eddie Hearn punting out himself to promote just anything? Eddie Hearn's job is a promoter, but has he lost touch with reality? Has he? Has Eddie Hearn lost touch with reality? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm starting to get a little bit worried. I'm starting to get a lot worried about when he's coming out with things like that because if they can put some of, some of this crap on that they're putting on at the moment, anything could happen. We could end up having Frank Smith with the spots from Matchroom who I'm told walks about about 13 and a half, 14 stone. We could have him against Porky Russ, couldn't we? From Porky's corner. If I knock this, uh, we could. If I knock this 20 pound off, we could end up meeting, couldn't we? At cruiserweight, me and Frank with the spots. What do you say about that, Frank? Because I know you're listening. <laughs> Hope you well, Frank. Anyway, uh, but as as he as Eddie, uh, Eddie Hearn. No shame. Uh, no, he hasn't. But it's Eddie Hearn. It, we're talking Eddie Hearn. It's he's uh, no shame at all. If anybody wants to listen to an interview about Eddie Hearn, go and listen to the one minute eight, one hour eight minute interview he did with Coogan Cassius in Chicago the the, the other day. Go and listen to that if you want to. Uh, if you want to know what Eddie Hearn is about, go and listen to that and then get back to me, alright? But, uh, speaking of no shame, <laughs> Paulie Malignaggio, the magic man, the man who couldn't knock a wet echo out, the man with the feather duster punches, Paulie Malignaggio, every time I see him on IFLTV, Boxing Social, Sky Sports, every time I see him, he's constantly going on about how he wants the Conor McGregor fight and constantly going on about how Eddie Hearn is a genius and constantly rimming Eddie Hearn and Adam Smith and everything that is matchroom. He is now... The Sky Sports American number one company man at the side of Michael Buffer. The man that doesn't even run his own Twitter. Michael Buffer. He's a typical ex-pro who's been to the top of the mountain and just can't leave the limelight alone. But he, is all, he also happens to be a very very good commentator but I only want to hear Paulie Malignaggi fight an analysis on HBO Showtime or well HBO's gone in it I only want to hear him on Showtime Dazone and Sky or wherever he's contracted to work I only want to hear him doing that I don't want to see him in interviews I don't want to hear it I don't even want to listen to any another IFL interview with Paulie Malignaggi going on about comebacks and that. We've just seen his comeback, haven't we, in that BKB where he hoard himself out for money. Oh my God. 
It's amazing what people will do for $120,000, isn't it? Pauli Malignaggi should be embarrassed, whoring himself out. Unbelievable. Uh, it is what it is. None of, none of these ex-world champions, none of them. There's maybe a few, but none of them are like my good friend Clinton Woods. British, Commonwealth, European. And a world champion. Held the IBF title over three years. He's not even shortlisted for the Hall of Fame. He's never failed a PED test. He's never been in trouble with the police. And he's gone from winning an area belt all the way through the levels. He's been in with some great champions, been in with Roy Jones, Tarver, Glenn Johnson three times. He beat Glenn Johnson, who knocked Roy Jones out. But yet, Clinton Woods is not in the Hall of Fame, but would you get Clinton Woods whoring himself out like Paulie Malignaggi? No. Sky Sports won't even have Clinton Woods on. Because when Clinton Woods was a pundit on Sky Sports, Clinton told it as he seen it in the ring. And he were pulled to one side and were told, no, you can't say that, Clinton, you've got to say you've got to say this. So Clinton told this certain person whose name I'm not going to mention. He said, listen, my, I'm here for my expertise because I've been there, seen it, done it, got the t-shirt. So I know what I'm talking about. That is why I am here. But yet you're telling me I've got to say this. No, I won't say that. So Clinton will not be getting invited back to Sky and put in a hotel and he'll not be pocketing his 500 quid no more, will he? So that's just how, it's, that's just how it goes, folks, I'm afraid. That is just how it goes. But so I admire Clinton Woods for that. And I admire him for the fact that he said he's happy with what he achieved in the box in boxing. Coming from a small promotional company like Dennis Hobson's, he's happy with what he achieved, but but now uh, Clinton doesn't carry off like Paulie Malignaggi. So, as far as I'm concerned, Paulie Malignaggi, do me a favour, put a sock in it. So, alright. So, what do you think to this, snoo this for a snooker shot? Have a look at this. Moving on now, moving on, Dillian White, what can we say about Dillian White? Well, first thing I want to say is this, he's got a great left hook, a great left hook, but what I want to know is this, where is Dillian White's B sample. Where is it? Where's this B sample? What is happening with this? Does anybody know? Can Eddie Hearn tell us? Now, I choose my words very carefully because Dillian's trained as a friend of mine, but I'm dealing in facts. And to be honest with you, Mark Tibbs probably wants to know what's happening with it because he's probably getting sicker, sicker hearing about it. I want to know what's happening so we can move on. If Dillian's took something that he shouldn't have done or if somebody spiked him or what. Mistakes happen. Is Dillian, has Dillian took something by accident and it's a genuine mistake like the first time he got banned for two years and does he just not want to come out and admit it or is it because is it, is it, nobody's going to believe him because of what happened before? I don't know. I mean, 
Dillian doesn't look to me like he's a he's a an expert on this kind of thing. I mean, he's not under, he's not been to college and learn learn about nutrition. Same as why boxers go bankrupt. They're not accountants, are they? I mean, Eddie Hearn keeps going on about the fact that Chris Eubank had 10 million in his bank at one point when he were fighting for the Hearns, and he spent it all and went bankrupt. And Eddie likes to point out that in that period of time, his father made. Uh, off, off uh, Eubank about half as much and he kept all his money now but Eddie Hearn's dad's an accountant Chris Eubank's not an accountant is he? or English Eubank so as far as I'm concerned as far as I'm concerned boxers are not accountants and not nutritionist experts either mistakes are going to be made this is why you have to have a team around you so I want to know where the B sample is. Where is it? I mean, it's over three months now, isn't it? We're into the fourth month now, and silence is golden, or is it the silence is deafening? No sign of the B sample, is there? But if we say anything on social media, Eddie Hearn says that we're a hater and that there's something dramatically wrong with our lives, so that. Yeah, if I say, if I, well, I, I've emailed him about it, he didn't reply, he usually replies, but when Eddie don't reply, there's a problem, so, but if, if he's got the answer to it, he'll reply, because he, he's transparent, and so is his dad, but his dad's not replied to me, neither has Eddie, but when I sent them an email going on about the threatening phone call I had, if you go back on my channel about a year, you'll see a threatening phone call that I recorded and I filmed. Now you'll see Matchroom's office number coming up. Now when I rung that number, Matchroom officers answered it the next morning. Now as far as I'm concerned, I will call off that phone because it came up on my phone. I've even got video proof. It came up Brentwood, Essex. So as far as I'm concerned, they rung me off that number. They both replied to me four times each, saying, no, no, it's, it's not us. Uh, so, what 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 can you do? But they're not replying over the B sample. But like I said, if you say anything, you're a hater. You're a hater, Paul Kent. You're a hater. You're not happy with your life. You're not happy with what you're achieving in life. Well, let me tell you this. No, I'm not happy with what I've achieved in life. No, but I wasted a lot of years. Ten years as a heroin addict. I've spent over ten years in jail. Right, so you've got 20 wasted years, but I'm more than making up for it now, aren't I? Eh? I am more than making up for it now. I am in a good position doing my channel, doing what I'm doing. There's nobody knocking at my door for money. I go about my daily life as I want to go about it. You know, I've got a family, you know, I've got children. I drive the car that I always wanted. I wear the same Mill Easy track suit that I've always wanted. <laughs> the, only thing, the only thing I'm unhappy about at the moment is the quotes that I've had for my two bottom teeth that have been uh, that, that have been banged out of my mouth. I'm not happy about the the quote of two thousand. Is it two thousand quid? Two thousand two hundred or something. I'm not happy about that. That's the only thing that's that's bothering me in my life. My, I'm happy about anything else. I'm happy about the fact that I've got a bald head. I'm happy with my hairline, Eddie. I know you're not happy with yours. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the fact that my dietitian says I'm uh, 44 pound overweight. So, but that'll be getting knocked off soon, won't it? I'm happy. I'm happy. Well, what I'm not happy about, Eddie, is you coming on social media and lying to fans constantly and putting crap shows on? I'm not happy about the fact that you've got Dillian, uh, that you've got Billy Joe Saunders, who's undefeated, and same age as Callum Smith, who's undefeated. They both got a will title each in the same weight division, but yet you're not putting them up, not putting them together to fight. I'm not happy about that. But other than that, Eddie, I'm happy. But if we complain. We're haters! We're haters! Porky, you're a hater! So, that was my impression of Ultra. Uncle Ultra. Shout out Ultra Tech Sports Raw. Give him a follow. 
give him a follow, give uh, him a follow, he's a good guy, and I'll tell you another good channel as well to follow as well, give a subscription to Sporting Eye, as well as subscribing to Porky's Corner and liking the video, why don't you follow Sporting Icons and tell me what you think to his videos, alright, tell me what you think to his videos, and then get back to me, Sporting Icons, he's a boxing man, Tell me what you think to his videos, alright? Now, Dillian White has served a two year ban it passed for an offence for a banned substance. I don't want to hear about all this, it were an over the counter substance. Well, everything, everything that you buy that's steroids or anything, you always buy it over the counter, don't you? Because it is legal in life. I mean, companies make this stuff and we have it in medications and all sorts, so it's all legal, isn't it? It's just that in boxing, it's illegal, so everything's over the counter. And I don't want to hear about all this adverse findings because when I have my drug test every 14 days at Aspire in Doncaster, right? If I have a drug, if I if I fail a drug test, I get kicked off my subscription for Subitex. So that's why I'm clean at the moment, right? But let me just say this. When I first started going there in January and I kept giving them uh, failures for cocaine for months on end, I kept failing. She kept saying, well, well you failed, you failed. Well, in April she said, oh, we've had an adverse finding in this for cocaine. But it's called a different name, it's some fancy name like heroin's called... Uh, opiates or something, well cocaine's called something else so one particular time she said we've had an adverse finding Well, and I, she explained what it meant, adverse finding just means you've failed so I don't want to hear all this adverse finding, Liam, Liam Cameron said to me it's only an adverse finding, a minute bit, well that's because all the rest of the minute, of the minute bit's been pissed out hasn't it, do you know what I mean, you're still caught aren't you it's still in your system. You're responsible for it being in your system. Now, Dillian White's responsible for that in his system. They never told Oscar Rivers. I don't even want to go into the fact, because I'm starting to rage at the moment, I don't even want to go into the fact about the gloves situation because that's been swept under the carpet because of the B samples. To, you know, that's bigger news, isn't it? But the fact that Rivers is being punched by somebody that's got the wrong gloves on and the, the all gloves that have not been inspected and the fact that he's, fa that he's failed the test and that they've not told Rivers because Usek, a matchroom fighter, has just fought Spong well, they were going to fight Spong but Spong's failed the test so they've told Usek about it and pulled him off show well, they didn't pull White off the show, did they? Why? Because they covered it up and I've been told that Mark Tibbs didn't even know about it because Mark Tibbs told me that himself on the phone. He said, no, I didn't know about it. And I believe Mark Tibbs. I know, I've also been told of other people that Mark Tibbs been, didn't know. But I have been told, I have been told that production staff at Sky knew. How's about that? So if a cameraman's going to know at Sky Sports, you can bet your bad and dollar that Mr. Bean, Adam Smith knew about it. Bean, run a bean, could have been, should have been, never been, bait bean. Mr. Bean, Adam Smith, you knew about it, didn't you? Bean, beanie, beanie at, bait bean, green bean, run a bean, could have been, never been. Bean, you knew about it. You knew about it, didn't you, Beanie? You knew about it, and that's no good. That is no good at all, Beanie. In fact, I'm just raging, so have a little look at these snooker shots and let me know what you think about it while well, I just compose myself. Oh, watch me tip. Change battery. So too much of this is going on at the moment. This this drug testing thing and 
you know, the, the too much of it is going on at the moment. For example, U6 opponent, as I've just said, Spawn. He just got busted, hasn't he? It's a joke. Spawn out, Chaz Witherspoon in. Oh my God, Chaz Witherspoon. I mean, pff, what what is going on there? That, I mean, that's another story, isn't it? The Chaz Witherspoon. They drafted him in, didn't they? Chaz Witherspoon, right? Chaz Witherspoon's been drafted in to fight the number fourth box wreck man in the world at heavyweight. Tyson Fury has slipped down to number five on the rankings. Do you know why that is? Because he's not fighting anybody. So Tyson's now the fifth best guy in the world. Andy Ruiz one, Wilder two, Joshua three, Usyk four, Fury five, Povetkin six, White seven, Miller eight, Ortez nine, Kubrick Pulev ten. Tyson Fury, his last win was Otto Wallin, rank number forty six. So just to get that little dig in there on Tyson. Do apologise, Tyson. Do apologise. Shout out to Asgi for uh, what, listening to my channel. Don't forget to report back to Tyson, Asgi. What what I've just said. Make sure you give. Him, make sure you tell him to give me a ring, Asgi. He's got my number. All right. So so. But getting back to this, what I'm on about here, because we're going off at subject here. Chaz Witherspoon, right, has just fought Alexander Usyk. The same old Chaz Witherspoon, 38 and 4, he's ranked 73 in the world. 73 in the world. Oh my god. Chaz Witherspoon is ranked 73 in the world too. He's had 10 fights in. Uh... He's had, hang on, 2, 4, 6. He's had 10 fights in the last. In eight, nine, in the last eight years, it. How many fights has he had here, Chaz Witherspoon? Oh my God! Two, four, six. Going back to 2012 against Seth Mitchell. Since then, he's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fights. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12, he's had nine fights in seven and a half year. Oh my god, he's been having a fight every 16 months or something. Oh my god, he's not very active, is he? So, where did Eddie dig him up from? I don't know, but Alexander Usek is 17 and 0. He's, a, he's in my top five pound for pound, right? And he's just fought a guy called Chaz Witherspoon who's just fought a guy. Who's just fought a guy who's ranked 178 in the world? So, how bad is that? How bad is that? That is a joke. So, Spawn got pulled off the card and they got Chaz Witherspoon in for a third as much money. I know that because we know somebody who's a promoter in America and. Unbelievable. So yet again, Eddie Earn pull outs and slipping in a cheap replacement. A bit like Joseph Parker. They slipped him in, didn't they? Hey? Old Joseph Parker. Hey, they slipped price in for him, didn't they? Unbelievable. Joseph Parker gets bit by a spider and turns into Spider-Man. Joseph Peter Parker. And then you've got Chaz Witherspoon slipped in for Spong on a third as much money. It's a joke. A total and utter joke. Speaking of jokes, has anyone seen Eddie Earn's toupee of late? Is that a toupee, Eddie, or what? Because if not, it's the worst comb over I've ever seen. Eddie, why don't you just get some shears and just go through it, Eddie? Just go through it all, grade one, and just. Do an agassi and just let it all just just be just be natural, Eddie. You've had the teeth done. Don't have the hair done, Eddie. Don't do a razor ruddock, please. Shout out to Razor Ruddock. Uh, my sponsor who sponsors me with this office, Kevin Hall. His uh, his pal Snod fetched him up to Rotherham. We had a night out. 
First time I met Razor Runnick, what a fantastic night that was. He is the best laugh I've ever had out. Out of all the famous people I've met in my life, and there isn't that many, he's the best laugh I've ever had. Uh, he's a better laugh than the Cobra. The Cobra has uh, one pint of Guinness, and he only drinks half of that, and he's, he's a bit dry in his frots, but as regards Razor Ruddock, you know, he's uh, ten bottles of, you know, Magnus with ice. You'll get ten of them down in. Calories in that Razor's unbelievable, but shout out to Razor Ruddock. I'm not going to say he's a pal, because I've only met him that once, but that was a great night at the... Uh, uh, a great night at the Grapes in Dalton, in Rotherham, but, yeah, but, but Razor's had, it, has, had his hair done, hasn't he, so, go on Razor, lad, go on Razor, but, uh, moving on anyway, moving on, but, like I said, have a look at this snooker shot for, uh, for a second before we move on, I'll just put these in to break it up. Keep coming down for that yellow, keep coming. Moving on to the Triple G fight, I thought he got beat, I think Lou DiBella's got a case for Derivenchenko or whatever, however you pronounce it, so I had, I had him, uh, I want to say he was a robbery but I had it to him by two rounds but whether you win by two rounds or not you should have got the decision. Now, a bit like Tyson Fury's fight with Wilder. You can make a case for a draw, which I had it after I watched it first time. Watched it second time, you can get make a case for a win. Uh, so I've watched it a few times. Uh, people close to me have watched it. You can't make a case for Wilder winning, but you can make a case for a draw. I've watched it twice now. Golovkin fight. I can make a case for Derichenko to win it. Yeah. Can I make a case for a Golovkin win? No. Can I make a case for a draw? Maybe. And that's how I tend to score things now. You've got to go. You've got to take any bias out when you score things now. And I tend to look at that with a lot of Carl Frotcher's fights now. I get a bit of stick over the Durrell fight. I can't make a case for Durrell winning the fight. I can make a case for a draw and I can make a case for a frotch win. So that's how it just it's just that's how it goes in it. That's boxing in it. But as Terry Chapman Dharma pointed out in his on the on his pod yesterday, uh, high at Highfield Boxing it is, it's the beautiful podcast. 
get get watching that if you want to know about boxing but Terry Chapp and Dharma pointed out that there's only three people in the whole building that whose opinion matters and that is as I've just said the judges so but it is what it is isn't it but Triple G is now pushing 38 years of age uh, 38 years of age he's pushing and he's knocking on a bit now isn't he Triple G he's knocking on a bit he's uh, born in 1982 8th of April so he's 37 and a half and he has beaten and I quote going through his record let's have a look he has beaten uh, well who's he beat really who can we say he's beat who's, who has Golovkin beat let's have a look I, I'm going to go through the, the former current and future world champions who he's beaten right he's beaten Adama Asumanu right he was uh, a super welterweight champion stepping up to fight Golovkin right So, as far as I'm concerned, he, he, he's no, he's no great, he, he's not a great win. In fact, is is he is he even a top win for Golovkin? I don't know, but uh, and in fact, it might even have been, it might even have been an intercontinental belt he won. Yeah, it was in the continental. So he's, you can't count him as a champion. You can't count him as a champion. But all you can count is Kasim Omer. That's it. Oh, I've got him mixed up. He were like middleweight champion. So that's one. Then we've got uh, Giel Daniel Giel number two. Daniel Gill number two. David Lemieux number three. Kelbrook number four. Well to eight. Daniel Jacobs number five. There is wins over world champions. Vanis Marty Roshian. Has he ever won a world title? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. No, he's an in in interman. WBC Silverman. Uh, no, he's not won one either. So, so we're stuck on five, aren't we, for Golovkin? Five, and then we move on to Derivchenko. Six. So, Gennady Golovkin has beaten six world champions, two of whom were a super welterweight and a welterweight stepping up. Now. Has he beat any? Has he beaten a world champion who had a belt at the time? Well, he's just beat Derevchenko, and that belt were vacant. Then belts were vacant. Now, and he, to be honest with you, I don't even think he, he's he's a. Uh, I don't even think he's a world champion either. Now he wants a world champion either. So he's beaten five, so it gets even worse. It gets even worse. Because I did have him beating Jacobs. It gets even worse. Yeah, I had him beating Jacobs, but he didn't get the decision, did he? So he's beaten five world champions. So the last world champion that Golovkin beat was Daniel Jacobs. And I had him losing that fight. And that were two and a half years ago. Uh, and before the, before that were Kell Brook. So let's go through the world champions in reverse order who he's beaten. Two years, seven months ago, he fluked a decision over Jacobs. I thought Jacobs won. Before that, Kell Brook, three year, one month ago, a welterweight stepping up. Before that, f four year ago, this month, David Lemieux, he beat him by knockout. 
And before that, Daniel Gill, we knocked him out. He were no great shakes. I mean, Dan Darren Barker beat him. I mean, Jesus. And before that, you're going to have to go to... Ouma. Ouma. And that's it. So Golovkin, this great big puncher who's Carl Froch, was supposed to be swerving. Golovkin, this massive puncher, has only beaten five world champions and he's finished. He's got five good wins and that's it. And Carl Froch has got 11 good wins and he's got five. Unbelievable, eh? Unbelievable. And then again, Chris Eubank Senior. He's only got four wins over world champions, only four. And he would have barry earned fighter with the WBO belt. Christopher Eubank Junior, eh? Uh, senior, sorry. How many world title fights did he win? He won 19 world title fights and only four were champions. <laughs> Former, current or future champions. Only four. So who were the other 15? It's a bit like Joe Calzaghe though, isn't it? 22 world title wins. And only eight of them were former, current or future world champions. Then again, Sven Otka. 22 world title wins. Nine were world champions, former, current and future. So that means that Sven Otka, who retired undefeated and has got the equal world title fight record with Cal Zaghi, Sven Otka has beaten more world champions than Joe Cal Zaghi as a super middleweight. Oh. My. God. But you'll never guess what. Who has beaten the most world champions as a super middleweight? Yes, you've got it, folks. The Sheriff of Nottingham, Carl Martin Froch, age 42. And he's talking about a comeback. He's saying he'll fight Nigel Ben. Oh, my God. Have a look at these snooker shots. What do you think to these? That's a pretty unorthodox way to pot six balls. It's not the proper way, but if you run out of position all the time, that's what happens. You need a little bit of luck with some of the shots, and uh, you end up having to pull miracle shots off. But in any other game, you just get beat. A good practice routine here is White on the pink spot, black on the yellow spot, do that ten times, uh, if you get three out of ten, that's good enough to, to uh, class your centre as a really, really, really good player, uh, if you get three out of ten of them. That's a percentage shot. Uh, the, in the old days, you people like Cliff Thorburn and Dennis Taylor, Eddie Charlton, people like that, they wouldn't have even gone for that shot in the olden days. They would have just played safe. 